Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasevich and in this video I will talk about event-driven architecture and how we can implement it in a .NET application. Event-driven architecture is a powerful pattern for building scalable, responsive and loosely coupled systems. And here we'll explore what the pattern is, its use cases and its advantages through examples. I'll be using Docker to install and set the RabbitMQ server. That said, if you haven't watched my previous two videos about RabbitMQ and mass transit with RabbitMQ, I strongly suggest you do so. In those two videos, I explained all the concepts about publishers, subscribers, queues or routers, and that knowledge is required for you to follow along with this one. Also, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel a lot and supports me as well. That said, let's move on with the video. So, I will quickly reuse a diagram from my mass transit video. This is how the event-driven architecture works, where we have producers or publishers that produce events. You can also see the event routers or queues. They make sure the event reaches the correct consumer. Finally, you see consumers or subscribers, the parts of our system interested in events. Again, please watch my RabbitMQ and mass transit videos to learn more about the whole concept. And as usual, you will find the links in the description below. Now, before I start, I need to set up a RabbitMQ server using Docker. As I did in my RabbitMQ video, I will use a Docker desktop app that is easy to use and install. Also, I already have the RabbitMQ installed from the previous video. Of course, as you will see in that video, for the RabbitMQ you need this command. Again, everything is explained there. Now, just quickly, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production-ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client C-sharp apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Now, let's continue. Events are the backbone of the EDA system or event-driven architecture system. So, let's start by defining the events or messages that our system will use. I'll define these events in the share library as they need to be accessible from both the producers and the consumers. So, as you can see, I have a class library project here named events. In this project, I will define the events for my application. That said, let's create a new class. Name it light switch event and let's make it a record. Here I need a correlation ID property which is a global unique identifier. This acts as a unique identifier for every generated event to enable their tracking. Also I need the state property and it is an enumeration that contains the current state of the lights. For example, lightState.on or lightState.off. In our application, when a light switch event is produced, it can contain a correlation ID to uniquely identify the event and a state to indicate whether the lights should be turned on or off. Consumers of this event will examine the state and act appropriately to control the light. Now, let's create a new class and name it thermostat temp change event. Also, I will make it a record. Again, I need a correlation ID property, which is a unique identifier, and also a decimal temperature property. This event allows us to send information about changes in the thermostat's temperature. With the events in place, let's implement the subscribers or consumers that will react to these events. I'll have two subscribers listening to the two different types of events I just created. As you can see, I have two console application projects named Light Control Service and Thermostat Control Service. Also, I added a couple of Nugget packages to these projects that I need to interact with RabbitMQ and as explained in one of the mentioned videos, Mass Transit works with message brokers and helps us implement distributed messaging patterns. 
It enables us to build an event-driven system that leverages a message broker like RabbitMQ in our case. This is why I have the second package installed as well. This is an extension package that allows us to integrate Mass Transit with RabbitMQ. Of course, this project references the events project. Also, the same situation is with the second service. Now, with all this done, in the Light Control Service project, let's create a new class named Light Switch Event Subscriber. Let's inherit from the iConsumer Light Switch Event interface. The iConsumer interface comes from Mass Transit and I use it to mark consumers. Also, I use it to define the type of messages our subscribers can handle. In this case, the light switch event. So, let's implement the interface and add the async keyword here. This class consumes and reacts to events of the light switch event type. This consume method is the entry point for the incoming light switch event messages. So, let's extract the event using the context.message property. Now, since I will have a bit of logic to control the lights, I will create the isSuccessful variable and await the call to the control lights async method where I will pass the light event variable as an argument. I will create this method shortly. After I get the result from the method, I can simply check it and print some messages based on the returned result. Now, let's generate the control lights async method. I will wrap the code inside the try catch block. And inside the try block, I will simulate a delay to represent network latency using the task delay method to create a delay of one second. Then I can check the state of the light switch event and react to it. As you can see, if the lights are on, I print an appropriate message. The same is true if the lights are off. In any case, I will return true. But in the catch block, I will print a message that I have an error controlling the lights and return false. Finally, let's configure a mass transit queue in the program class. Here, I will create an instance of a mass transit bus control using the bus.factory.create using RabbitMQ method. This allows our application to connect to RabbitMQ and receive events. In the configuration, I will use the receive endpoint method to create an endpoint and name the queue lights. Additionally, I specify light switch event subscriber as the consumer for this queue. This means that the application is set up to consume and process events of the light switch event type from the lights queue. After this, I can start the bus, print some messages and stop it. Again, this complete logic is familiar if you watched my mentioned videos. Now, that we've seen how the light switch event subscriber processes the light switch event messages, let's turn our attention to the next part of the architecture where I will control the thermostat. So, in the thermostat control service project, let's create a new class and name it thermostat event subscriber. Since this class will be quite similar to the previous subscriber I created, I will simply paste the code here. You can see the same logic where I extract the message, call the adjust thermostat async method to change the temperature of the thermostat, and finally print some messages based on the returned result. Also, I can paste this private method here. And again, you see a similar pattern here. I create a delay, print a message, and return true. And if something goes wrong, I return false. Finally, let's tie everything up at the entry point of the thermostat control service application. Since this code will be almost the same as the previous one from the program class, I can simply copy that one and paste it here. 
Then I can change the queue name to thermostat, the consumer to thermostat event subscriber, and finally I will change this message. Now, you see one big advantage of the event driven architecture. Both subscribers, light switch event subscriber and thermostat event subscriber, can run independently. They can react to events as they occur, and there's no tight coupling between them. So, now we have our events and a couple of consumers listening to those events. However, I need to trigger these events. And this is where the event producers come into the picture. Producers generate and send events to RabbitMQ. For our application, I'll create a producer to simulate user interactions like turning lights on or off or adjusting the thermostat temperature. And as you can see, I have prepared another console application project named Publisher. Here, I also have a reference to the events project and installed the same libraries. With that done, in the program class, let's create a control lights method. So it will be an async task method named control lights. And it will accept the IBUS control type parameter named bus control and a light state type parameter named state. In this method, I will just extract the logic that enables us to send a light switch event to control the state of the lights in our application. Okay, let's create an endpoint here. And I will await the bus control dot get send endpoint method and provide a new URI instance with the RabbitMQ endpoint. The RabbitMQ localhost part is like that by default. Again, as you know from my RabbitMQ video. And the lights part must match the endpoint in the subscriber app. Now, I can use the endpoint variable, call the send method with the required event generic type, and provide the object I want to send. In this case, an anonymous one with the state property populated. Finally, let's just add a final message here. Additionally, I need one more method here for the thermostat logic. And since it will be almost the same, let's paste it here. You can see the same pattern. The control thermostat method serves as a mechanism for simulating user interaction to adjust thermostat temperature. Finally, let's provide a way for the user to interact with the system. Here, I will create a bus control variable using the bus.factory.create using RabbitMQ method. And then, I will add a try finally block. And in the try block, I will start the bus using the start async method and paste the logic for the user interaction. You can see a few options for the users to choose from and based on the selected option, I execute the required method. Lastly, in the finally block, let's stop the bus. Great. Now I can run all the apps together. And of course, I already set up that. And I can test the logic. First, I will choose to turn the lights on. And you can see the message that I send command. And in the light control window, you see two messages. Also, let's turn the lights off. And again, we can see two expected messages. Lastly, let's modify the temperature. Enter the correct number. And you can see the send command message. And in the thermostat window, you can see the messages as well. Great. I hope now you understand how EDA or event driven architecture works and how you can implement it in your .NET applications. That said, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.